Hey, welcome back to Music with Mrs. Patterson. Let me adjust this a little bit, make sure we got you exactly where we want you. So today we are going to learn about the bass clef and the treble clef. Remember two weeks ago, we talked about the bass clef and how it's dots in music and how they have dots next to them. So today we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what the bass clef and the treble clef do together and how they work as a team. So on your paper, or your whiteboard, you need to turn it vertically so it's up and down long ways like this. And we are gonna draw two staffs, two staves, two staffs. A staff is five lines that we put our notes on. And so we're gonna draw five lines at the top, skip a little space, draw five lines at the bottom. Okay, so here we go, draw along with me. Did you get your five lines? I know I've, I've had a little more practice drawing those than probably most of you have. Um, there we go, now you can see them better, I think. I think I cut my bottom ones off there. There we go. So now that we have our five lines or our, our grand staff, now we're going to put labels on them. So remember how two weeks ago we made our base clef and it looked like that? Okay, that was real easy to make. We're gonna put that on the left-hand side of our bottom five lines, like that. There we go. I'm gonna erase him so you don't get confused. We have to put something up here for our top notes and it's called a treble clef and it looks like this. A big hook, a little loop, a big loop, and a swirly. I'm gonna do it again. Can you see that okay? A big hook, a little loop, a big loop, and a swirly. Now I have kids who cry, I can't do it, it doesn't look perfect. It doesn't have to look perfect, as long as we know what it is. Matter of fact, you could even do a line and a backwards S, and I would know what you meant if you had it on your staff. I would be like, oh, that's probably a treble clef. So, if you need to pause and practice a few of those, go ahead. But I'm gonna go up, go on ahead. So anytime you need to hit pause, please do that. Pause, rewind, watch it again. I'm gonna go ahead and put my treble clef on my top staff. Let me erase this, because this is just clutter that I don't need in my life. I'm gonna put my treble clef up here. Big hook, little loop, big loop, swirly. Just like that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so now, what are we gonna put on there? So the bass clef, I will write that for you. That's bass, not bass. The bass clef is anything that's low notes. Our left hand of the piano, the bassoon, the, the tuba, the trombone, um, the cello, upright bass, any low note. Uh, the bass is in a choir, the baritone, the, even the tenors. That's the, our lowest half of our notes that we have. The upper half is treble clef. And you can write this with me if you want. I find I remember things better if I write them down. Treble clef. These are gonna be the right hand of the piano, the flutes, the clarinets, the saxophones, the trumpets, um, the violins, the high notes, the sopranos, and the altos. Okay, so if you will think of this all being one big piece of music. This tells a musician exactly what note to play. Not just A, but that A, not, not this A up here, but this one right here. It's very, very, very specific, and we don't have to guess or wonder, wonder which A the composer meant. We know exactly which one. So I'm gonna fill this in, and I want you to watch me fill it in, and then I'm gonna show you some things about it that maybe you've never noticed. Are you ready? Did you write yours as fast as I wrote mine? Probably not, and that's okay. I didn't write it that fast either. Okay, so right now, when you look at this, if you were like me when I was your age, I looked at this and went, ugh, why can't the bass clef 
be the same as a treble clef. Why can't this be A and or F? Why can't that be F A C E? Why? Why do I have to learn these two different clefs and why are they different? And you know, and I, my teachers were probably just like, zip it, move on, quit worrying about it. Well, finally, when I was in college, the light bulb went off and I went, oh, that's why they're not the same. These are all connected and here's where it connects. You ready? I'm gonna show you a magic trick. It's not really magic, but it was for me. You see a pattern here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, what would this note be? If I put a note right here on the top, what would that have to be? What comes after A? B. So that has to be B. Okay, are you with me so far? This, this really is not rocket science. What comes before E? So if I'm setting my alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, oh, D. So D would have to go right underneath. It would have to be that next space, if you will. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, <clears throat> D, E, F, G. Oh, wait a minute, what does, there's gotta be something here. So in music, if we need just an extra line, five was not enough, I need a little extra, we make a ledger line and it looks like this. It's just a little line. It looks like a little dash or a really big minus sign. On that is going to be C. I didn't even make my C very well. Miss Addison, you're an awful writer. C. But not just any C. This is a special C. This is middle, middle C. I know my handwriting is atrocious. Middle C. So that middle C and the, it's the, pretty much the middle note of the piano, connects all of these together. And when you think of this as being one big clef that tells me as a pianist, I'm gonna play left hand, I'm gonna play right hand, I'm gonna play low notes, I'm gonna play high notes, then it makes sense that it is all just one big pattern. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and I could put a G there, and I could put ledger lines going all the way up to the ceiling. Um, I could put an F right here and have ledger lines going all the way down to the floor, and that A, B, C, D, E, F, G pattern would never, ever change. So I understand that for some of you, this is a review. Some of you are watching this going, I didn't know that. Great. Some of you are watching going, wow, that's why that works that way. Some of you are watching going, I have no idea what you just did. And that's okay. So wherever you happen to be in this process, this is just a review for some. It's an epiphany for others. And it is some kind of crazy magic for the rest of you. So wherever you are, I hope that this maybe helps you understand a little bit more about how we write music, why we write it this way, that it is not to torture you or to be mean. And maybe this starts to make a little more sense in your brain. Okay, well, until next time, hope you have a great week. See you later.